Hi, this is Cub of Oven, and I'm going to be playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night on Sega Saturn. Uh, this game also goes by the name Dracula X Nocturne in the Moonlight. Uh, that's actually what I call it whenever I'm playing the Saturn version. Uh, but a lot of, you know, people in the U.S., I mean even myself, uh, actually know it as Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And right off the bat, you'll notice we have three different characters. There's Richter, who was available in the PlayStation version, but you could only access him through a code. Uh, of course, Alucard, who you know, is really the, the main character in the game. He's the only one who has an actual storyline. And of course, you have Maria, who was exclusive to this version for the longest time. There is actually a, a version of Maria that's playable in the PSP version, but she's she's a lot more like her Rondo counterpart. Whereas this version, uh, most people tend to uh, you know, tend to make claims that she plays more like Mega Man would, stuff like that. So um, she's really not as faithful to you know her previous uh, you know character, but. At the same time, I, I really felt that she was superior in this version, just because she's uh, she's definitely not nerfed like the PSP version's Maria was. But of course, we're playing as Alucard, so let's get started. And as you'll notice, this opening cinematic is in a slightly different aspect ratio. Uh, at least the, the video itself is. Uh, it's of course letterboxed, but this video, it's wider than it would actually be on the PlayStation version. Although on this one it of course doesn't fill the full screen. Uh, it, I think it was more done because of the Saturn's limitation with full motion video. Although, uh, you know, some developers were able to get, you know, really, really nice full screen video. Uh, out of the Sega Saturn, I think that uh, just a lot of them really didn't have what it took, or maybe they were using the incorrect codex, you know, stuff like that. But uh, overall, still, it's a really, you know, nice quality video. Uh, probably just a little bit below the, the, the level of quality uh, visually as the PlayStation version, but again, still solid. I do like the logo in the Japanese version better. It just, uh, obviously I don't know the uh, interpretation of the characters or anything like that, but, you know, really nice looking logo. And of course here we have Richter. Uh, this, this section of the game is actually called the prologue. Uh, what's happening here is it's, it's basically just a reenactment of the final battle from uh, what is chronologically the previous game in the series. Uh, it was Rondo of Blood, and in the U.S. version, you'll notice it actually mentions Bloodlines. Uh, Bloodlines really doesn't have a whole lot to do with this game. This is literally the uh, almost like a direct sequel to Rondo. So we have enough hearts there. One thing I will be honest about is probably the only reason this is, uh, you know, in my eyes, you know, vastly inferior to maybe the PlayStation version in one regard would probably be the voice acting. I mean, not that the, uh, I mean, obviously the, the Japanese dialogue is, of course, really solid, but I've, I've just always been a bit of a sucker for the, uh, the English, like the original English uh, translation, not the PSP one. <laughs> the 
Yeah, Dracula's not really, uh, doesn't really put up a whole lot of a fight here. He, uh, more or less, he's just gonna take your item crashes, and, uh, that's pretty much all you really have to do here. The graphics, they might be a little bit toned down here from the, uh, PlayStation version, I can't really remember for sure. And, of course, there's a, there's a good bit of slow down there, but overall, still, um, you know, gets the general you know, the general scene, uh, you know, and goes with it, and it's still pretty solid. And of course, this text here, it's gonna have, uh, really the same storyline and everything like that, generally. It is a different translation, though. Uh, you'll notice that especially with, uh, whenever it mentions Trevor, because he's actually called Ralph, uh, in the Japanese series, and of course, you also have the fact that uh, you know some of the wording here is uh, you know you know, a little bit off. This is essentially kind of recounting re, uh, the events of Castlevania 3, of course, on, M uh, on the NES. So uh, it's just talking about how Alucard, of course, had, you know, helped Trevor out, or Ralph in this case, and, uh, you know, of course, basically sealed himself off. So what happens here is uh, essentially there's been some kind of disruption. Um, you know, shortly after the events of the previous game, and uh, essentially what happens is Alucard awakens, uh, knowing that something's going on, and of course goes to, uh, you know, halt the events of, you know, what are about to occur. Now, I'm not sure, but I think that the, the layers of the trees might actually come up a little bit short on the Saturn version. Um, I'm not sure if it's here or if it's just in the cathedral. I know it's in the cathedral that uh, there are fewer tree layers and whatnot, but uh, I can't remember if there's a difference between uh, you know this portion of the game. Now, even though I can skip death in this version, um, you know, so that I don't actually lose my my inventory, I'm actually going to basically play it fairly and, uh, you know, let death take my stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to level up uh, a few times just to kind of give myself a little bit of an advantage otherwise, just since I've got stuff that will, you know, will allow me to kill things a little bit faster right now. The one thing that's interesting about this game, although it really doesn't necessarily make the game harder, is, uh, you know, the more that you level off a particular enemy, you're going to notice that you're going to be less able to, well, not really less able, but it's going to take a lot longer to gain levels off of uh, certain enemies that are, uh, I, I can't remember how it's based, but generally what happens is I believe if you're like the same level as an enemy or a certain number above or below it, essentially it'll cap its uh, rewarded ex uh, experience from that enemy at about like one basically, so eventually it's kind of pointless, well not really pointless, but more so tedious and uh, what not to actually kill a particular enemy to level up. So if you you could actually level grind here if you wanted to, it's just that it's gonna take an eternity. Cool. 
I'll just level one more time, and then we'll get going. There we go. That should be fine. Yeah, the game's not too difficult, so, uh, it really doesn't... Yeah, it's, it's not as though you're giving yourself a huge advantage, but nonetheless, it's, you know, you might as well use, uh, you know, what you've got while you've got it. I can't really go down here yet. We'll have to open that up much later in the game. And you'll notice I can't get anything out of candles yet. <laughs> 